A few weeks ago, Adobe added a new denoise capability to Lightroom powered by artificial intelligence. They've really been feeling the competition from DxO, Topaz Labs, and many others. So we now have two options to remove noise in Lightroom. When should we use one versus the other? Let's find out. Hello amigos, I'm Pablo Garcia, the engineer photographer. As I mentioned in the intro, we're going to take a look at the two options that we have in Lightroom Classic to remove noise of our images. The first option is the traditional option that we had had for quite a few years. And it works really well for images that have low noise or moderate noise and they're well exposed. Images that don't have dark shadows that we need to bring up, bring up and preserve detail. So for those images, I think the traditional option works well. This image of the Grand Canyon I took with a Canon R5 is at ISO 3200. And if I zoom in, you can see there is a low level of noise, both in the clouds and in the canyon itself. So how do we use the traditional options? Well, we go in the develop module under detail, we have both sharpening and noise reduction. You'll see now a new button called Denoise. That's for the second option, the new option that uses artificial intelligence. But the first option may be a little bit hidden. So you will see manual noise reduction. Just click on the little triangle and we'll open up the old controls that we used to have. And we have now six different sliders. The first one is luminance, luminance noise. That's the first section. And what I would like to do first is even before reducing noise, I want to create a mask for sharpening. You know, Lightroom by default for raw images applies a certain level of sharpening, 40 points of sharpening. And that sharpening is applied to all the image, including the noise. Now, to make noise removal a little easier, what I'm gonna do is create a mask and I'm gonna hit the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and move the masking slider. And basically, the only areas that are gonna receive the default sharpening right now are the areas in white. So the clouds and areas of no details I move to the left, everything that is turned black is not gonna have any sharpening. And that's gonna make noise removal in those areas a little bit better. So that's the first step. Next, I'm gonna go to the luminance slider but before I do that, I'm gonna put the image at 100% and set it up where I can see areas that have some background or like the clouds, for example, and areas where I want to preserve detail, in this case, a section of the canyon. I want to be able to look at both areas at the same time. Now we need to play with the luminance slider. And if we go all the way to the right, it removes all the noise, but the image becomes too soft. And we're trying to find a happy medium where we have enough detail and we get all or most of the noise removed. Sometimes it's easier to visualize the image in grayscale. And to do that, we can hold the O key or the Option key on Mac while we move the luminous slider and that converts the image to grayscale. And that sometimes makes it a little easier to visualize the level. This one, something like 36, 37 points seems to work. Next, I'm gonna use the detail slider. The default is 50. And I'm gonna play with the detail slider, trying to bring some of that additional detail back. Now, if you go too much, that's gonna bring noise. So you kind of have to play with the sliders to try to find that happy medium. So something like 60 points for this image seems to work. And the final one is contrast. Again, you can adjust contrast. Too much contrast is gonna bring noise back. And for this one, something around 35, 40 points seems to work. And now if I let go of the Alt key and I get my color back, you can see I got rid of most of the noise. If I turn it off, I can see on my monitor some of the noise. You can see it there. If I release it, 
now I got rid of most of the noise. The second section of noise is color. So for images that usually have little noise or moderate noise but are well exposed, color noise is really not a big deal. The default option of 25 is good enough. You may even want to reduce it a bit, but I usually I leave it at 25. Is I only use color noise removal beyond the default when I have high ISO images, but those I tend not to use this tool in Lightroom to remove noise for those images. So that's set. I removed the noise from the image. I took the image, I created a virtual copy, and I edited the image. And this is the result. I corrected the horizon, I cropped a little bit, I adjusted my colors, and I think end up looking pretty good. But the clouds, when I zoom in, the clouds had noise. And what happened is during my edit, if I open the mask, I darkened the sky. And in darkening the sky under presence, I had increased dehaze a little bit. And by doing that, that enhanced the texture in the sky, a little bit of noise that was still there. So what you can do is use a mask, in this case, the semi sky mask, and I reduce texture a little bit. And under detail, you also have noise. So I can add some more noise correction or noise removal in this case, just to the sky. It's sometimes a needed second step. So I do the global noise correction, and then I would use a mask in areas that maybe need additional noise correction, and I'll increase noise removal there, or also reduce the texture a little bit. And that usually gives me very good results. So let me show you the image at full screen. And this is the final image. I think it did a pretty good job using the traditional tool. Again, for low noise images, or moderate noise images that are well exposed when we don't have, you know, very dark shadows. So now let's talk about the second option that just added a few weeks ago. Now this option works very well for high ISO images. I still prefer the XOPU RAW 3. I think Adobe did a very good job in bringing this new capability, but they're still playing a little bit of catch up. So let me show you. Here I have this image taken with a Canon R7 ISO 12800. So if we zoom in, you're going to see we have high level of noise on the water and on the ducks that were kind of swimming in formation. And it was very dark. So this photo, you know, has a lot of dark shadows. How do we remove noise using the new artificial intelligence? Again, we go under detail. We use the new denoise section. All we have to do is click on the noise. It's going to open up a new window. It's analyzing the image. And we have a single slider. Slider that we can adjust from zero all the way to 100%. Now, we get a preview. It's not the best preview. It's a small preview. We have a little loop on the bottom. I'm going to click on that and see the whole image. And now I'm going to put the cursor in the area that I want to amplify. I'm going to select the head of this duck right here. And again, I'm trying to see a little bit of the head and a little bit of the water. Very limited view that we have. And now we just adjust the slider, starting from the low end and moving up. And usually something in the 40 to 70 points, depending on the image. And you're still trying to strike a balance between removing noise and preserving detail. And I'm going to continue. And you can click and see before, release, after. Before, after. So maybe a little more. Before and after. So let's say something for this image in the order of 57 points. Next, we have an option, create stack. It's going to stack it with the original image we want to or not. I'm going to have it unchecked. And then I'm going to se select enhance. And it says it's going to take about 10 seconds to generate the image. And it's going to generate a DNG from the original file. I'm not going to do it because I already generated it. So let's go do a comparison. 
So here we have a comparison. On the left, we have the original raw file, noisy raw file, and on the right, we have the DNG that was created by the new AI-driven denoise. And as we can see, it did a pretty good job of removing the noise in the water and removing the noise from the ducts and preserving a good amount of detail. And again, you just had to try the slider to the right and to the left and trying to find what you feel is the right balance for that image. And it's very simple to use. One drawback is, you know, it does generate a DNG file. The original raw file was 27 megabytes. The new DNG, 156. So I went from 27 to 156. Clearly, you're not gonna do this for every single image. Now, if you use the Pro 2 or Topaz Labs, the noise or Photo AI, they're also gonna generate very large files. So this is not something unique to the noise, right? Anytime you generate a TIFF, or a DNG from the raw, you're gonna generate a, a companion file that is gonna be many times larger. Now, how well does the image edit? Let me show you. So I took the DNG that had noise removed and I did the traditional edits I do to an image. I cropped it, I do some global edits, some local edits. And as you can see in this image, he edited very well. So I think we now have within Lightroom a very good second option for removing noise for high noise images or images that are dark in which we need to recover shadows. The only drawback is that we're going to generate a companion DNG that is going to be very large. Now, talking about the DNG, if I have a DNG, can I apply the new AI noise? And the answer is no. I have here this DNG that I had created. And if I look at the denoise section, it tells me that the noise is not currently compatible with this photo format. So it's only raw files. How about a JPEG? Same thing. It's not possible to process today a JPEG with the AI denoise. How about a TIFF? Same problem. We cannot process a TIFF with the new denoise capability today. And I say today because we hear that Adobe is working behind the scenes trying to bring the new AI-driven denoise to other file formats beyond just the standard RAW files. Let me give you three more tips. Can we do batch processing? So if I take one image, I'm going to select a second image and I'm going to select a third image. I can go to the noise and now I can adjust the sliders. The slider is going to remember the last setting, the last time that you use it. And now the button here at the bottom says enhance three images. So I can do batch processing. The only drawback is that it's going to apply the same level to all three images. Whatever level you selected is going to be applied to all three images. In this case, because I had three images. But that may be okay depending on what images you selected, but if you want to apply the noise individually, then you have to do one image at a time. Now, talking about making one image at a time, here I have this image. If I want to remove noise, I go to the noise. I know if I click on the noise, is going to open the window. Well, you have a second option. If you hit, if you click Alt or Option on Mac and click the noise, now it's going to process, but it's not going to open that window. It's going to use whatever last setting you use and it's going to apply it. And you just have to wait the eight or 10 seconds, depending on your computer to generate the file. But you don't have to go through that additional step of opening the window and adjusting the slider. We're just gonna use whatever level you had used before. The third tip is that you can combine. I have shown you this image before. You know, I had taken the DNG already clean and I applied my edits. Let's say I saw some additional noise. So I can now come in and use the traditional method of luminance noise removal 
on top of the DNG that I had already processed before. So that gives me a lot of flexibility. Basically, what I can do now is don't be as heavy handed with the AI method because the results can be a little plasticky sometimes. And if I still need to remove additional noise, I can then use the traditional method on top of it. Well, amigos, I hope you like this quick view of the two options that we have in Lightroom. I'm very happy to see that Adobe finally added a AI driven capability. Adobe is a pretty big company. They have a lot of resources. I'm sure they're working very hard on continue to improve this new capability in Lightroom. Because frankly, they're playing catch up to some of the other companies like DxO and Topaz Labs, for example. Talking about DxO, I leave you here with this video because DxO Pure Raw 3 is still my favorite option for removing noise, especially high noise images. And you can take a look at the latest version of that tool by watching this video. Thank you for subscribing. I hope you like my videos. Give me a thumbs up, send me your comments, and I'll see you next time.